Welcome to online worship at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection in Yardley, Pennsylvania. We are gathered by Christ, growing in faith, sent to serve, and empowered to witness. Our faith community welcomes all individuals regardless of race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, economic status, age, disability, or family makeup. Child of God, you are welcome here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. From Psalms 145 verses 1 through 8. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I will exalt you my God and King 
and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall tell of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about God's generosity, challenging the common assumption that God rewards people according to what they have earned or deserve. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of God is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go out into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and he saw others still standing. Why are you standing idle all the day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me? for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to live to give this. I choose to give to the last the same as I gave to you. And am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. At 14 years of age, in 1900, Sam ran away from his home in the south of Sweden. He signed on as a deckhand on a sailing ship. After two years of voyages to many different countries, the ship made its way to America. At that point, Sam
Sam decided it was time to jump ship. And so he did. He ended up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, which was actually the best possible place for a Swede in those days, a Swede who could not speak English, but Bay Ridge was full of Swedes. It was a Swedish enclave in the mid 1900s. Sam became a carpenter and an artist. He married and had two children. Their family was raised in my former church in Brooklyn. Sam's family had a staunch, trusting faith in their Lord and were good people. After 65 years of marriage, which is where I came into the picture, Edith, Sam's wife, became wheelchair bound and then slowly, so slowly declined from Alzheimer's. During those last five years of Edith's life, Sam took care of Edith at home. He bathed her, fed her, put up with her nastiness because Edith was one of those Alzheimer victims who become vicious and cruel. I never heard Sam complain. He prayed his way through this tough time. Just before their 70th wedding anniversary, Edith died. And Sam? Well, Sam just sort of quietly, peacefully faded away. He died within the year. I really liked Sam. He had faith and he had a sense of humor and he clearly had a sense of adventure. But here's a fun fact about Sam. Sam never became a US citizen. When he died at 92, he was still technically a Swedish citizen, an illegal immigrant here in the United States. He worked, he paid his taxes for 76 years. So what does God think about this? I've been reminded about Sam lately as I listen to all the debate about who deserves what in our American society. You know, illegal immigrants, should they be counted in the census? Should incarcerated people be given the vote? What about felons who have served their time? Who should get food stamps or rent assistance or college debt forgiveness? Should the U.S. have socialized medicine for all? Do some people not deserve medical care? How shall we treat addicts who have broken the law, put them in prison, or pay for rehab? How do we distinguish between legitimate protesters of injustice and those who are determined only to riot and be violent? So many questions in our society today, and you might be squirming or even angry because I brought these issues up at worship. If you're like me, your mama raised you with this refrain, don't talk about money, politics, or religion. The problem with that kind of thinking is that all of life's issues are religious ones. We are spiritual beings created in the image of God. Our lives cannot be compartmentalized into religious and non-religious boxes. When we say that God sent Jesus, God's only son, to be our Lord and Savior, that means Jesus rules over all of our lives. And not just that Sunday part, but every day, all of our lives. So what shall we say about these divisive issues today? How do we evaluate the questions in front of us? And more importantly, what does God think about these issues? Today's gospel points us to an answer. Today's gospel is perhaps the most upsetting image of the kingdom of heaven that 
Jesus offers to us. Jesus tells us that the generous employer keeps hiring workers all day long. Early in the morning, decent wages are offered to a group of workers who agree to work for that amount. Every hour after, the employer hires more workers, and behold, at the end of the day, the same wages are paid to those who start near the end of the day as those who have worked all day. And the folks who have worked all day, well, they grumble. But the generous employer chides them, saying, you were happy with the wages I offered. Are you envious because I am generous to someone else? The flipping of the order of this world Mercy instead of justice, grace instead of just desserts, is a theme that Jesus keeps repeating when talking about God's kingdom. Whenever anyone experiences grace, blessings that we do not earn or deserve, the kingdom is here. All the main characters of the kingdom parables that Jesus shares with us are images of God and are examples for us to follow. Today's gospel of the generous employer is not an isolated parable. The kingdom parables are all about blessings given rather than what is deserved or earned. Think about those images, especially the main characters in the parables of the kingdom, Jesus talks about the careful gardener, the wild, extravagant sower, the wonderful baker, the diligent coin seeker, the good shepherd, the pearl buyer. All these images, they can trip us up though, make us balk at accepting the message because kingdom living requires us to give up some cherished values, some long-held opinions in order to enter into God's presence. Which is where I think Sam and the questions of who deserves what in the United States today fit in. Because here and now, all of our divisions and debates, all of our rancorous public squabble boils down to one issue, generosity. Specifically, generosity to those who have long been considered outsiders, immigrants, the uninsured, the unemployed, the hungry, the addicts, the felons, the protesters, howling against all these folks and the benefits that would bring them hope and justice are those who feel it is unfair to those who have followed all the rules and have still struggled. And you know what? It is unfair. It was unfair that Sam jumped ship and found a good here, good life here illegally for 76 years. In Jesus' parable of the generous employer, the same reality is present. What the generous employer does is not fair, but it is generous and merciful. Those who work the fewest hours will not be able to live on the little pay and hourly rate would afford them. They need a full day's pay to survive. And if the employer is willing to offer it to them, why should others complain? Their blessings do not diminish the other's blessings. There is enough love and blessing in God's heart for all people. 21 years ago, Torres and I decided we were going to get married. My son, who was seven at the time, started acting up. He became either hyper or moody. His usually cheerful attitude disappeared. 
He started clinging to the dog at night. And when I finally managed to get him to talk to me about what was going on in his mind, he told me he was afraid. I'm scared, Mom. I'm scared you won't love me. After you get married, you won't have room for me anymore. Oh, I had to hold him tight and reassure him that there was room in my heart for him, for his sister, Hannah, and for Tours. I told my son that God gives us hearts that are big enough to love many people all at the same time. And the more people we love, the bigger our hearts will grow. To my son's way of thinking, Tours was like those undeserving folks in today's debates. Tours had snuck into our family. He didn't belong and he should go back to where he came from. My son was so afraid. There was not enough love in my heart for him. Sometimes we feel the same way my son did when he was seven. The same way those workers hired early in the day in Jesus' parable felt. Why do they get what I want and worked for? Will there be enough for me? Then we recall what the generous employer said. Are you envious because I'm generous? Jesus' parable of the generous employer is a parable about God. It is about grace, love beyond understanding, love no one deserves or earns. Mercy, hope, generosity, the character of God, and how we who are created in God's image can also be generous and merciful and loving if we choose. Amen.
in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Generous God, you made the last first and the first last. Where the gospel challenges the church, equip us for the works of service. Strengthen those who suffer for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle in great cities. Nothing in creation is outside your concern. Mighty God, in your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and development workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to all in need as you are gracious and merciful slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all that are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the generations that have declared your power to us. Give us faithfulness to follow them, living in Christ, until you call us to join them in the joyful song around his throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give your thanks for the gift of baptism and for Alan and Ronald, who were baptized this Sunday. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God blesses us and sends us in mission to the world. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.